OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Well, thank you for being here. Um, I scheduled this to do um, short sharing of some best practices for Canvas. Here to answer questions, have you share things? that are working for you in Canvas. And then just give you, it's, it's more of a work time so that I'm here and I could answer questions, but time for you to work on your Canvas um, classes. So we definitely won't be, I definitely won't be talking for anywhere near two hours. And I talk so fast, I like get three times as much in. So 20 minutes is really an hour in my presentation. So I put the link in the chat. It is tinyurl.com forward slash OTAN 2021 to get to this website. It has um, some distance and hybrid learning resources because that was an earlier presentation I did. It has the Canvas resources. So these are some short video tutorials. Most of them are ones that I did for things that teachers needed to learn. And then I did a few for students. And then I just included the link to the Canvas community um, guides, which can be overwhelming, but you can find almost everything there that you need. Um, you just got to get the right keyword when you're searching for it. And I put a couple Zoom tutorials. And here is this um, slideshow presentation that I put in there, as well as just some additional document resources. And if you have resources you want me to add here, so you've got some great Canvas resources you want me to put, if you throw them in the chat, when I'm done today, I'll add them to this website. So it'll be like active and I can add things that, that you're using. So let me go ahead and, um, so here again is the website address. If you wanna go there and download the presentation or just the resources that are there. Here's my email. And if you're like me, sometimes you're, you don't think of the question during the presentation. And then like in the middle of the night, like three o'clock in the morning, you'll be like, oh, why didn't I ask her that? So feel free, I'm really good at answering emails. So feel free to send an email anytime and I'll um, answer your email. Probably not at three o'clock in the morning though, but I will answer it, I promise. So the, I just wanted to give you a background on, on how we started using Canvas. So I work at Mount Diablo Adult Education, and I only started there about a year and a half, but I've worked in ed tech and teacher training and technology and IT for about almost 40 years now because I'm just that old. And when I started at Mount Diablo in 2019, um, they ha were, had shared with the teachers what Canvas was, but it was completely optional. So I think at that time, only Surge Tech happened to be using it, our surgical technology program. And then in March 16th, we had the meeting that basically says the next day the school was going to close and who wanted to start teaching online and who was just going to cancel their programs. And I don't know if anybody was in our previous session, but in the previous session, my dental assistant teachers and I talked about that they decided to offer an online program literally within a couple of days of the announcement. And um, we used Canvas at the time, it was the free version of Canvas. So I'll talk a little bit about that and some of the advantages of going to the paid version. And I'm not getting any Canvas kickbacks for that. Um, so the two programs that decided to continue to use Canvas and go online, again, the free version was Surge Tech, who'd already been using it, and then my dental assistant teachers who had never used Canvas before. So they had to learn Canvas, learn Zoom, and figure out how to teach online all within about four days. So that was definitely a challenge. So we didn't know what we were doing with Canvas. I had just been learning Canvas over the past six months that I was at MDAE. And so I was trying to figure it out along with the teachers. So we didn't necessarily make the best choices. So as we're using it, we've gone back and made changes. And then we have just adopted the paid version within the last few months. So during the next time that like the dental assistant starts their next cohort, they'll move from the free version to the paid version. So what we found, these are just some best practices. What we found was 
before you start working in Canvas, you need to figure out the files that you're going to have. So for most people, you've been working face to face and you've been using physical paper. So if that's the case, you have to figure out what files do I need and how am I getting into a, them into a format that students could use. So the two generally free formats that you that students could access are PDF because Adobe Acrobat's free and Google, as long as you ask them to create like a Gmail account, which again is free. But then you also have to think about, do I want them to fill in these documents? So if you want like a form, again, you have to think who is making that form? Is it a PDF form? Is it a Google form? How are we getting these things into a, into a fillable format? Because you don't want, a lot of students aren't gonna necessarily have printers to be able to print things. So you wanna try to set things up that allow them to complete it electronically and if being great it turn into you electronically so i'll talk a little bit about that and i noticed a couple of my dental assistant teachers are here so they can also jump in too the second thing we have to um we had to think about is how did we want to organize our modules so there's like time wise weekly monthly there's subject wise by concept, and then there's other, which could be like by chapters. So I just wanna show you a couple of, um, so my dental assistant course is schedule, is, is put together by topic. So for example, this one is, um, this module is on dental impressions and laboratory materials. The next one is in coronal polish and then radiology. So they chose to do theirs by topic. And then in that module, they have all their pieces that they need. So sometimes they have Google Slides, they might have quizzes, they might have um, a workbook page due, but it's all within topic. But then others might do it by week. So our high school program, I know, does all of theirs by time-wise. They put their resources at the top and then they do their modules by weeks. So the advantage of this is it's really easy to tell where you are because they put the dates right here. The disadvantage is every time you make a copy of this, you have to go back and rename all your modules because the dates are gonna be, are gonna be different. But it's helpful if you're working with students, especially high school and ESL that need the the, the additional sort of visual of which module are you on now, right? The other thing you can do is if you, I don't know how many of you have like are using Canvas, but these are the publishing buttons, right? So if I click this button, nothing in this, even though these look like they're on, this took me forever to figure out. These look like they're on, but because the module isn't, published, the students won't see week one at all. So if I go to my student view, which is helpful when you're working in Canvas, notice my week one isn't there at all, right? So that's another way to help your students is by unpublishing in um, weeks or topics or assignments that have passed and they no longer need to access because then they don't see as much when they're logging in and it's a little bit easier for them to manage. So notice I click this again. So if I go to my student view, I'll now be able to see week one. So super easy to turn something off and on. So back over to here, that's what you, you need to think of. So what was important, the third one, coordinating with other teachers, it's especially important if your teachers are creating multiple classes that the same students are moving from. So for example, high school or dental has multiple teachers working in classes. It's really difficult for students if one teacher decides to do it weekly and then another teacher decides to do it by subject, right? So back to what we did to help us look similar is we created sort of layouts for high school courses so that they all look very similar. So for example, we color coded our high school courses 
in blue. So anything, any class that's for high school has this blue bar here, blue text and a blue banner with the name of the course. We also made sure the home page has all the critical information on it. So if you don't have a home page on your um, Canvas, I strongly suggest you create a home page and put all your critical information on it with as little scrolling as possible. So for, for them, they put the dates of the semester, the date and time of the class, a link to their syllabus, their Zoom link, teacher, office hours, and office Zoom link. And then they also created a lounge that has other resources like career transition services, technology videos, the student handbook, things like that. But every time a student goes into the Algebra 1-4 class, they always land here on the home page. So you want all your critical information on your home page so they see it first. And, and if you need to add something, they'll they'll be able to see it right away because it's always the, the page that pulls up on their homepage. So for example, for my CTEC classes, we made CTEC classes burgundy. So it has, so you can definitely tell, see the color scheme is completely different, but the important information is still on the homepage. Um, it looks different because this isn't high school, but it has her office hours links, it has her class link, it has her email, it has information like you can text between 7 a.m. and 8 p.m., don't text at 3 o'clock in the morning. And again, she created a lounge that has her other resources in it, like the student handbook and CTEC orientation and, and videos. And she has those all on her own page. So again, coordinating with other teachers to make sure your classes look similar, even if you're in the free version and you each have a different, you know, login. So you're you're working separately. Make sure you're adding one another as teachers to your courses so you can all see the courses and edit if you need to. And then free versus paid. The biggest difference I find. So right now my dental course is in the free version. The biggest difference with paid is you have an admin portal and all your courses are in your admin portal. So that's how I can do things like color code it, right? And organize it in a certain way and create templates all in my paid um, portal. And then the other thing in paid that I found really helpful is you can change what your help menu looks like. So for example, we added view, this is my teacher view, view teacher help resources. Those are videos that we created at Mount Diablo and they would click on the link to get there. Get tech support sends an email to me. Canvas training portal goes to the Canvas site um, and then there's ask the community and submit a feature idea. But for students, they see view student help resources, which are the videos we created. So anytime we know students are having problems, we can create a short how-to video and send them here and then get tech support, which sends an email to me. So they're not gonna see all the other helps like go to the Canvas community and things that aren't gonna be very helpful to them. They're gonna see the help resources that they need the most. So in your paid version, you can change what the help button looks like, which again, I found really helpful. Okay, any questions so far? Uh, yes. Um, let me see who has their hand up. I think it was Sherry. Yeah, thanks, Renee. So just a quick question. Um, so when you're when you're in the paid version, which I know we'll be converting to shortly, but when you're in the paid version, so uh, from the student view and or the instructor view, is there like a drop down menu of options, uh, of fields and options that you can choose from to populate? Is that how that works? Or how do you get those hot links? Are you just creating them and making your own hot links? Or how is that working? Are you talking on the home page, like, you know, the the class link in the in the zoom link? No, in oh, the help. Oh. So when you went into the oh, help. Oh, good. Good yeah. question. So so that is a centralized um, an admin thing. So if you want it, you know, so that's that's something I did and it shows up in every single class. So it's not specific to a course. It's specific to every 
every course that is in our portal? That's a good question. So I can't have a help menu in search tech look different than the help menu in high school, for instance, right? That has to be, it's the same help menu, but I could just change. Um, so it is in um, the admin portal. So they're preset categories in the help menu. Um, we basically. can make anything we want, actually. I see. So, oh, okay. Um, so it's been a while. So there we go. Help. So in help, this is the help menu, right? And I could add any, so I can click a link and I could add a link to google.com and just make them go to Google to go get help, right? I could add anything I want, add a custom link, search Canvas guides, but I could add any link I want in my help and then I could reorder it. And then I could say if this is going to be viewable by students, by teachers, or if you also use other categories like observers, teacher aides, you can decide which one of these help menus show up for each of the different um, levels of um, user that you have in your Canvas organization. Okay, thank you. Yeah, of course. Um, other questions? No, I don't see. Is any. there a link to show us or a place to go when we're making a um, page, the, the, the page that you're talking about, information page? Um, the home I'm, page. Oh, the home the page. page. Like, thank you, the home page. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's okay. I can show you how to how to create. So a home page is just a page in Canvas that you've designated as home. So I, I'll show you how to do that. Yeah, it's it's not hard. So that's that's a great question. So I'm going to make a note so I don't forget. Homepage how to. And it's the same in free and paid. There's not a lot of differences. I think just the centralization of things is the biggest advantage you get in the paid. Um, and then it's also helpful if you're like it. If I have any administrators here in the free version, that means you have to be a member of every single class. So if you notice in my free version, this is my free version. When I go to my desktop, because I'm, I'm trying to help everybody, I have to be a member of every single class that I'm trying to help with. So my dashboard is like super full. But if you look on my dashboard for the free version, we have 80 something classes, but the only classes I have on my dashboard are the ones that I that I need on my dashboard because I can get to the other ones through the admin portal. So I don't have to be a teacher or a student in classes to be able to go in and help people or add stuff to classes when you're in the, the paid version. Um, Renee? Yes. So we have someone that asked if you can show them how to create a student lounge. And then there was another question that you may be coming to when you get ready to have them work, which is um, whether or not they can log in to their Canvas to do the exercises that you might have them do or whatever you're going to have them do. Thanks. Uh, yeah. So if everybody has Canvas, when we get to home pages and stuff, I'll walk you through and um, I could show you how to do it. So you should have your own Canvas account. And if you don't, you can just um, I can show you how to create a free Canvas account if you don't already have one created. Yeah. And can you have the um, student lounge in the free course? So um, just so you know, the student lounge is not, um, here, I'll show you that this is the trick for student lounge, okay? So a student lounge is just a single slide in Google Slides. That's what our, that's what our lounge is. And then all you have to do is change the word. Okay, so this is a slideshow, right? This is a slideshow I'm using with you. If I wanna turn this into a lounge, I'd put a picture of my avatar and I'd put, I change this into a link that goes somewhere, right? So you're just you're putting cute little pictures on there. You're linking to whatever you wanna to link to. And then when you're done, you change the word edit right there to the word present. And when you do that, it takes out all the stuff around it. And you now just have this really nice page. And we just called it the lounge and linked to the lounge. So all the lounge is, is a Google slide, but you just want one slide. You don't want a bunch of slides like we have on this one, right? You just want one slide. And then if you link to something, you'd make another slideshow to link to if you want to link, or maybe you're linking to your student handbook. So you'd have a PDF saved in your Google Drive and you just link to it. So the trick is to change the word edit in a Google slide to the word present 
and then you have, and then whatever you put on that, uh, and then you just link it in your Canvas account. <coughs> Great. So super easy, free. Um, and so if we go back to my, uh, let me go back to this one. That's my paid one. And let me go back to my, um, my lounge. So she just found a background and put these on. And then she just found pictures of books. And then she just linked to the orientation page. The student handbook, I think, is a PDF. Yep. So it's just a PDF um, that she linked to. Um, I'm not sure what she linked to for the world. I don't see anything right there. And then you can add, oh, she has audio. So you can add audio buttons to your slide and um, it'll play the audio. And then she linked to video tutorials. Yep, and here's our help tutorials. So I think your overview may have answered the question, but we have a question, um, purpose of the lounge. And will the students have to see, uh, have a Google account to see the lounge and click links? Ah, two good questions. So the purpose of the lounge was we have things that we wanted students to just have regular access to, like the student handbook. Um, and the CTEC orientation had some download things for financial aid and things. But we didn't, I mean, we didn't want to make the homepage like super, super long, right? Because a lot of this could have gone on the homepage. So it was for things. Plus, we're trying to figure out, we haven't quite done this yet, how to do a calendar with appointments too. So we're trying to like link appointments in there um, to the lounge. But we just created the lounge maybe two months ago. So we're still figuring things out there. And then do the students have to have a Gmail account? No, they do not because we make it um, when you go into your um, Google Slides, you're just going up to share. And then you're getting this link and you're changing the link to anyone with a link can view. And then you copy that link and put that in your Canvas <laughs> account. And then they'll just link to your presentation. Um, and, or you can just copy this. As long as you've set the share to anyone can view, they don't need a Gmail account. Although I gotta say, if you have the paid version of Canvas, the integration with Google is really quite nice. So if you look, um, so we're asking all of our students once we move to the paid version to make themselves a Gmail account, that they have to have a Gmail account um, because we want to use Google Docs with them when they're, um, let me see if I can find a technology worksheet, student view, let me see. Uh, she hasn't, uh, sorry, let me see if I can find one that is published, sorry. You know, I, I'm sorry, I didn't create one with it. But if you have one where you're, uh, you set up an assignment and you create in the assignment, sorry, and you say you want to up have them turn something into you. So, oh, you know why? Because that's a page. Well, that's really helpful, Renee. Okay, hold on. It helps if I'm on assignments instead of pages. Renee, how about dental assisting in our Google Slides? We have questions. From our Google Slides. I actually wanted something where you were having them turn it in. Let me see oh. if this one has a submission. Um, and she doesn't. Okay. Um, sorry, I should have had I should have had one ready. But if you have, if you do an assignment, and here, let me just do a new assignment for you. So I do an assignment, and this is important. This is on one of my slides coming up, and this is how we really did this wrong when we started. So I've learned assignments in Canvas. So if you learn nothing, this is really important. Assignments in Canvas are only for things you're going to grade. If you don't need to grade it, don't use an assignment. Use a page. A page is just an empty place to type stuff. You could put links, you could put documents, you could put links to discussions, you could put images, you can put video links, anything you want on a page but it's not graded, which means it's not going to show up in your gradebook. 
So if you're finding, if you're using Canvas and you have a bunch of stuff in your gradebook that you're not grading, and you're like, why is all this stuff showing up in my gradebook? It's because you used assignments instead of pages. So I find, let me go back to my dashboard and then I'll, then I'll do the assignment. So if I go back to my dashboard and I'm just gonna pull up this course, this is a course I did for teachers when I was um, doing a, a teaching unit. Basically your units are gonna have mostly pages because most of what you're gonna be sharing in your course, at least most courses that I've helped with is information. So you might want to give them links to their homework. You might wanna be giving them links to videos they need to, to watch. You might wanna be reminding them of the homework pages they need to be reading. But you don't necessarily need to be grading any of it. So you notice here, I use text headers, I used pages, I used another text header. Text headers are just used to divide, if you have a lot on a, in a module, to divide them up and make them easier to read right? And you just click plus. And notice by default, it's an assignment, which is why I think a lot of us do everything as assignments when we didn't know better. At least that's why I did. But you can change here and you can pick and make it a page or a text header, which is the two most common ones to use, page and text header. Okay, here. So I want to go back to assignments real quick. I'm going to make an assignment. I'm going to call this sample. Uh, okay, and I'm going to make this, you have to be turned in to grade. And I'll make it worth 100 points. And then I'm going to say that I want this to be a file upload. Okay. And I'm not going to, and by default, you probably shouldn't restrict your file types because if you say like only PDF, it sometimes messes up even if the student is trying to update a PDF, upload a PDF. So I usually just say, if you want them to upload anything, just pick file upload. Then I'm going to save and publish it. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like as a student. So as a student, I would click submit assignment and notice right here, I could upload a file if it's on my computer. But if I have a Google account, I just click Google Drive and now I can select anything in my Google Drive to upload to be graded by the teacher. The advantage of this, which is really cool, which is why I say if you're going to use the paid version of Canvas, this is so good, is when they upload a document for you to grade, Canvas automatically makes sure it's shared with you. So you're not going to get the error that says you can't read it because the student forgot to share it with you. So if I click on my, my Google Drive and I select a file, the teacher is going to be able to see that file regardless of what the sharing is because it's going to be, it's going to change the sharing for the teacher to see. Um, yeah, so see, Renee, says, yes. I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt the no, flow, but we it. have a couple of questions from Marin. So once you, once you create an assignment, if you meant, if it needed to be a page, can you convert it to a page or do you have to start over again? Question one. Good. And question two is, um, is that only true for the paid version? And I think that was uh, referring to the integration with Google Drive. Marin, is that correct? Yes. Okay, so first let me show you the select the file and then I will answer, I wrote down both the questions. Okay, so notice thanks. when I'm, I'm a student view now, I'm uploading my homework to you that, that I saved in Google Drive. It is saying clicking attach will temporarily change the share settings of your file to allow LMS to use it. So the student knows that the share is being changed. I now attach it and now the teacher will be able to see it. So if your students, even if your school, like our school doesn't give our students Gmail accounts or, or even though we use Gmail for our, our K through 12 students, our adult students aren't given them, but we asked them all um, to make Gmail accounts so that we can specifically use Google in now that we have the paid version. To answer your question about the free version, I was told Google works in the free version, but I was not able to get it to work. So I, if you know, and you don't get a lot of 
you know, live support with the free version, which makes sense in Canvas, right? So I'm sure you can post questions to the, um, to the Canvas question area. I can't think of the name of it right now. Um, and somebody that uses Canvas might be able to answer you that uses the free one. But I, this literally, I had, I just went in and um, added Google Drive a, a, and I said I wanted it to show up for every single class in my paid version. So now anybody that makes a class will automatically just have Google there for uploading their files. The teachers don't have to do anything anymore. Um, but I, when I, I read something that it is available in the free version, but again, I wasn't successful in trying to get the free version to work. So maybe there's additional steps that I couldn't figure out. And then the other question was um, pages. So the only way that I know, but feel free to jump in. I probably have other experts here. If I have an assignment, so let me just go to my assignment and let me say it is this assignment. And I decided there is nothing here I want to grade. This is just information and I made it an assignment instead of a page. I actually have to um, highlight everything and copy it and then go back to pages and make a new page. So I'm gonna view all pages, make a new page, paste it onto the page, name my page. Um, I'm gonna save and publish it. And then I'd have a page. So then you can go back to your assignment and delete the assignment if you want it to do that. But there's no way to just take your assignment and then just make it turn into a page. So I realize if you've been doing everything in assignments, it's going to take you a while to change them all over, right? So what we've been doing is when they start a new cohort, we start from scratch. So um, generally what we do is we go to settings. And if, if you have people here that think really linear, I'll go back to my presentation. I know I'm jumping around. And I'm gonna export this course content and I can export the whole thing and it'll have everything in it. You could then put that in a new course and not publish any of it and just move the stuff that you need when you need it in the course. So all of your files will be there. All of your old modules will be there. All of your assignments and your pages. And then you could just manually add things when you need it, because what I found is the first two, three, four times that you're working in a class, it has enough messiness that it makes more sense to start new each time, right? So you're bringing all your stuff in, but you're not using the structure you created before. So I now have, I'm gonna download this and I would go here and I'm just gonna go into the free version because it's, it's a little bit easier for me to start a course in the free version and I'm gonna do, okay. So let me say I'm gonna do a new dental assistant course. Okay. And I wanna go to settings and I want to import what I just brought in. So I wanna import my Canvas course. Okay. And I want everything in. Because you don't want to, right? you have a course, it has a lot of good stuff in it. You know, if I said to my dental assistant teachers, oh, by the way, we're moving to the paid version next time and you can't move anything over, they would probably all just, just quit, right? I, they, they're, <laughs> it's just not going to happen, right? So you want to be able to bring your stuff over, but you want to be able to rethink your organization because you didn't know what you were doing when you first did it. At least I didn't, right? Um, and so it's, it's downloading the content. I don't even remember what I downloaded here. Sorry. Okay. Let me see. Okay. So notice this has the homepage. This was a blank class I just made. So it made, it, it added the homepage. It added all your modules in here. And it came in in the same published mode it was that I exported it. So I would basically take all of these, unpublish them all, and start with a brand new module and call this, I'm going to call this week one, right? I know they don't work on weeks, but just to start. And then I might say, okay, during week one, 
I want to use, I'm going to move this to the top because my week one. Okay. Uh, sorry. I went too far up. I'm going to move week one up to my module. So I'm starting again with week one because I want to reorganize it. And let's say I still want this text header. All I have to do now is move that up and it will be in, in my new module, right? Well, it should be. Why are we not, why are you not there? There we go, right? And then I also want this page, right? So I can, I can move that up and it's, it's not being, there we go, it's not cooperating, okay. So I can use anything that I had before, but let's say this assignment, it really was supposed to be a page, right? So I don't wanna move that up because I want it to be a page. So I would go here and copy this, and I would go back to week one and I want to create a brand new page. And I want to call it, I'm going to name it. I don't remember what it was, sorry. And then I'm just going to paste in that content that I just got that was an assignment, but now I want it as a page, right? And so now I have that in my module, right? So you've got your content here that you exported from your previous course, but you're creating new modules and dragging things into it is a great way to start if you find your, the course you have needs a lot of changes. Because I find that's quicker than trying to change things that you're publishing at the same time. It's, it's really hard to do that. So let me go back here and make sure that I haven't since I've been jumping on. So that. Renee, we have a couple of comments. Absolutely. Um, and if I miss a comment, I apologize. Uh, let's see. We had one about one was how do you know if you have the paid version versus the free account? OK. The other question was uh, adding external apps. OK. Um, and yeah, and then we have some other things, but go ahead. You want to take those? Sure. Um, well, that's a really good question. I honestly don't, I mean, um, oh, I know exactly how to tell, sorry. If your address to your course, so if you open up your course and your address starts with canvas.instructure.com, you're in the free version. If you're in the paid version, you're going to start with whatever the whatever your school decided to call your your paid um, portal. So ours is Mount Diablo Adult Ed dot instructure dot com. So again, if if it starts with canvas dot instructure dot com, you're in the free version. If it starts with something other than canvas dot instructure dot com, you're in the paid version. Right. Um, and if I'm going to show you. And then the other question was adding an external app. So there's two ways to do it. In the free version, you do it by course. So you're in your course. I'm in my course called Introduction to Teaching Canvas. I went to Settings. And I went to this tab right here called Apps. Okay. And then they have all these built-in apps that you could add to it. So let me see if. They have Google on here. Yeah, they do. They have Google apps, right? So I can click this. Um, let's see. Oh, I need to add Google assignments. See, that's where I was having trouble with. Okay. Um, this, and then if, if there's a built-in app, you could click add app. And you have to go to the app, the app that you're doing, like Google, and type in consumer key and shared secret, and they'll give it to you. So usually there's somebody to email a Canvas rep at the app that you're trying to add, and they need to give you something called a consumer key and a shared secret, which is different for every, every Canvas course. But I can't give that to you. That's from the app. But the Google LTI um, is this page. So uh, it's E here. I'll put this in the chat. And this will walk you through how to add the Google to your Canvas course. So again, if you're using free, 
unfortunately, you have to do this with every single course that you create. If you're in the paid version, whoever your admin is could do this once and it'll show up in every single course that's created in, in your portal, right? Mm -hmm. So let me put this in the, um, in my, if I can get to the bottom again, let me see, why am I not, there we go, chat, chat. of course it's not going to show up there, okay. So that, the, the link I just put is, is called Google LTI, and it's for, it's for adding Google to any learning management system in which, which is, which LMS stands for. Um, including Canvas, right? And again, it's free and it should work with the free one. But since we were moving to the paid one, I just didn't spend a lot of time um, trying to get it to work. If you are using the free one and you really want to use Google and you can't figure it out, email me and I will figure it out for you. And I will send you, I will create a video of how to do it. Because once I do it for one of you, it'll be the same for everybody. And then I could just I could just share the video with you. So if you can't figure it out um, from this page, going through the getting started page to add it to your Canvas class, again, let me know. And if you're in the paid one, your admin has to do it because you can do it on your course though, unless your admin has blocked the ability to do it on your course in the paid one. But if you want it to show up on all your courses automatically, admin has to do that. Okay. Okay, uh, Renee, yes. are you ready for another one? Absolutely. <laughs> You've got Keep some going. great. That's what, the, that's what this is for. Great yes. questions coming through. So now Perfect. someone made the comment that if you back up that course and restore it as a new course, you're going to have a mess of your grade book if you do that. Um, hold on. Let me go back to my dashboard. I think I was, which one was I in? Oh, I was in my free one. Sorry. And I closed it up. Let me go back to it. Don't you love LastPass? <laughs> yes. I would never <laughs> remember my passwords without LastPass. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Um, and I don't remember what the courses that I just did. So, unfortunately, I, did I even name it? <laughs> um, I think you named it Dental something. Oh, okay. Let me see what I thank you. Um, it might be, yeah, because I imported it. Um, I don't know. Let me see. I don't think that one's it. Um, I thought when I imported it, you know, let me just do this. Go ahead and ask the next one. I am going to go to my dashboard and just make a new course and re-import it and see what happens because I can't remember. So I'm going to make a new course. I'm going to call it, um, check for grades. Um, create a course, go to settings, and I'm going to import and re-import the course. And then because I, I thought, so let, I thought it did not include the grades, but I'm going, but we'll see in a second. What's another question? Another question is, uh, is the only reason to use Let's see. So one reason to use pages is to not clutter your grade book. Any other reasons to use pages over assignments, I think, is what Francis wanted to know. OK, good question. So let me show you. I'm going to go back there in a second. So I'm just going to uh, pick. I'll pick this one. OK. And then Liz Flynn commented, really good comment. It kind of helps the student know that there's something to turn in if it's assignment as opposed to a page which maybe is just consuming content. Right, so an assignment, I'm gonna create a new assignment here. When I do an assignment, you have the name of the assignment and the text box. That's the same as pages, right? So you've got, you have to name your page and put your content on page. And this bar is the same, whether it's a page or an assignment. So you can type, you know, bold italics, you can add an external link, you can add images, you can add audio files, you can add documents, you can connect to your Google Drive and add Google Drive links. Um, and this is, this is um, Commons, um, which I wasn't gonna talk about today. The difference is down here. So none of this is, is here on pages, which I'll show you. So on an assignment, 
you need to give it some kind of points because you're grading it, right? So you need to, you can leave it zero, but if you're going to have zero points, you might as well do a page, right? You also need to decide what group you're going to put it on for grading. So I'll show you groups in a minute. Then you need to decide how you're grading it. Are you grading it by a percentage? Are you grading it by the number of points? Are you just giving it a letter grade? Do you have a GPA scale that you've added? Um, how are you grading it? Then you have to decide if you're going to require a submission. So as somebody said, yes, if you want them to upload something, it has to be an assignment because you can't upload anything to a page. But not everything you're grading is necessarily going to have an upload. For example, our dental teachers have a physical paper workbook that the students use, and they don't always make them take a picture of the pages and upload it. Sometimes they just have them hold it up during, during a Zoom time, or they'll check it when they're in class, and then they come and grade it. So in that sense, they wouldn't need to submit anything to get their grade. Um, but if they want it to um, submit a file, you would put online and then submit a file. Right. You can also decide if you only want them to upload it once or if they can re-upload more than once, which would replace the file if they re-upload it. Um, you, I have not used peer review. Um, and then you could decide who you're assigning to, which actually they have this in pages too. But they do not have dates. So you can do a due date for the assignment and when it's open and when it's closed. And since I'm here, let me just tell you some advantages and disadvantages of doing that. If you put a due date, it'll show up on the students to do list. So let me, I'm going to go into, um, oops, nope, sorry. Let me go back here. Go to science, go to student view. And notice there's a bunch of to do's right here. That's because I know this teacher in search tech puts due dates for every assignment. So if there's a due date for your assignment, it's going to show up in the to do. Now you do not have to put a to do date. So the advantage I found of to do dates is that it shows up in the to do list. The disadvantage of a to do, let me just pick one, of a to do is if you have a student that needs to um, do it, but you don't want it to be late, you have to go in and add that student separately and then make a different date for that student. Otherwise, it's going to show up as late. Okay, maybe that's not a big deal. The other thing to think about is, do you want it to only be open for a certain time, which has nothing to do with due date. So if the due date was due tomorrow and they turn it in the day after tomorrow, it's going to be late. But maybe you're going to have it available from two weeks ago until a week from now. So it'll still be late if they put it in two days from now, but they'll still be able to see it. Again, if you do the available dates and somebody needs to access it later, you're gonna have to go back to your assignment and change those dates by adding that student separately. So some of my teachers choose not to do any dates when they're creating assignments, some only do the due dates and not the and always have it available um, as long as it's published, it'll show up. So it kind of just depends on how you want your assignments set up. I just wanted to show you back to assignments for a minute. So um, do I have any, what am I in? Um, eh, sorry. Okay, so in assignments, you need to grade on something, right? So, so most people are going to have categories. So when you do your assignment, you have to decide what category it's going to be in. And you don't want to create new categories. You want to think ahead of time. What are the things I'm grading on? Just like a real grade book, right? That's, it's a grade book, right? So I, in this one, they're grading on quizzes, assignments, and class participation. Right now, you can have zero percent categories. Let's say you have practice tests and you want them graded, but you don't want them added to the final grade. You can create a, a category called practice test that's worth zero percent. Right? Um, we did that in the dental class. We made a zero percent category for um, practice tests. 
Um, but you need to decide. So back to assignments, you were asking me, what are the biggest differences? You have to know your category. You have to know how many points it's worth. You have to know how you're grading it. You have to know if you're gonna have a submission, what kind of submission you want to allow. You have to decide if they can upload once or more than once, and then decide if you want a due date and when it's available. Versus a page, I'm gonna view all pages. I'm gonna make a new page. Notice the only thing I have here is the title, the text, and who can edit the page, which 99% of the time you're gonna leave it as only teachers. That's it. So there's nothing else that you're filling in down here on your page. It's just basically I am sharing information with my students that I'm not going to grade, right? So that's why I said for most classes with teachers that I've worked with, they have at least 50% pages, if not 75% or more, because they're sharing information in their Canvas course, but only grading a small percentage of it, which would then be the assignments. I hope that makes sense and, and isn't too like out there. So let me go here. Um, so we talked about the difference just now between pages and assignments. We talked about the home page, and I'll show you how to make the home page. This is important though, what components students will see. So when you go into Canvas, you have all these choices of what students could see. So they can see a home page, which I strongly recommend. And you, that's the only thing you cannot turn off for students. You have to allow them to see the home page. You don't have to have a home page. And if you don't have a home page, they won't see it, but you have to leave home page on. And then of course, announcements, assignments, discussions, grades, you're all adults. You can read all of that, right? But for most classes, you want students to see much less than that. You, you don't want them to see a lot. So we decided for our courses, I'm going to leave here, that we generally only want students to see three things, home, modules, and grades. And so the next question is, but wait, I want to use discussions and I want to use quizzes and I want to use assignments and I want to use pages. Absolutely. And you're putting all of them in the module pieces. So you would put your pages here. You would put your assignments here. You would put your quizzes here. You would put your discussions here. Everything would be under modules. So you would use assignments. You as a teacher would use quizzes, but students would get to everything through modules especially helpful if you're working with high school students and ESL, especially critical. And then you might even want to make it even less choices. So for example, in my orientation courses, I have only home. And that's because most people that are doing the orientation have never ever used Canvas before, and they have to navigate it without any help because they literally register for this and then have to go through this orientation on their own. So I have only a home button and I put everything on my home. So I put a slideshow, documents to download, a presentation, a quiz, and all their assignments that they have to do to upload their paperwork, all, in, all on the home button. So you don't even technically need modules, if you're working with younger students, I know we're all adults, so that doesn't matter, but ESL, especially beginning ESL, it might be helpful to put everything just on the homepage. Okay, any questions, comments? Um, yes, we okay. have. Um, with the assignment due dates, et cetera, I have had students who are late in submitting who can't find things. Is that because the assignment is past due and therefore not still accessible to them? Can you? I, I'm a little confused on the question. That's okay. So I think the problem is if you have an assignment and if it's due today, tomorrow you have a student that tries to do the assignment, but it's now late, are they going to still be able to see it or you'll have to reassign it? You may have answered so, the question. Good, no, I understand the question. Good question. Okay. Okay. So if you just put in a due date, right? You don't put it available from and until you have a due date and this assignment is published. So the little circle is green. They'll see it forever until you, until you make the green circle, not green anymore. So they can turn it in anytime they want a year from now, it'll still show up as long as you published it. However, if I put the until date until tomorrow, 
and they try to turn it in the day after tomorrow, they won't even see this assignment to be able to turn it in. So if you want to allow them to turn it in, you have to then click add, add that person, whoever that that person is in the class, okay, and then change and, and then change the until date past whatever, whenever you're allowing them to turn it in. What we found in our classes is we have students that are still learning how to time manage. They're just not great at it. And so we will we were doing until in these dates, and then we'd have five students that didn't get it in. So then we'd have to go back and change this. And then we'd have two that still didn't quite make it. So then we're going in again, and it was just so much work. So the due date is nice because you'll know right away in your grade book if it's late, because it's gonna show up as late if they turned it in after the due date. It's gonna show up in their to-do list, but you're not gonna to have to go in and change the dates if somebody missed the date it was due. They'll, just, they'll be able to turn it in forever as long as this little green dot is on next to the assignment, they'll see it. It'll just, it'll just show up as late in the, um, in the grade book. Um, I hope that answers the question. All right. Susan, was that good? Did that help? Perfect. Thank okay. you. Okay, great. <laughs> okay. All right. So I just, um, so as I mentioned, generally the main components that your students are going to use is homepage, modules, and grades right? Now, some people might also use some of the other ones, so I just wanted to go through it. Quizzes, I have to say that making quizzes in Canvas is kind of painful, right? So we use a program that goes with our textbook called Exam View that allows us to export as a Blackboard file. So if you have anything that exports as Blackboard, you can import your quizzes into Canvas. And then you could still edit them in Canvas, but you're not, you don't have to do it um, from scratch. But if you want to, you can make your quizzes in Canvas. So you can, you can go in here and you can create a new question and you can type in your question and you can add pictures and videos and whatever you want. And then you can type in an answer and you could decide this is the correct answer. And you could type in your other answers and then you could update your question and then repeat that for every question you wanna do, which is like, it just takes a long time. But if you're doing a one or two or three question test, not a big deal. But if you're doing long tests, it really behooves you to try to find something that'll let you export it as a blackboard so you can import it into Canvas. And, and if, you, if you have questions, reach out. I could give you some options. Like if you have your test in Word, there's, some, there's a program called Respondus that's pretty reasonable, like 20 bucks. That'll let you get your, your tests in from Word into Blackboard, which you can then get into Canvas for quizzes. Um, so we talked about assignments. Assignments are to create an assignment and to initially set up your assignment groups, right, of how you're grading. Your announcements are nice because it basically goes to your student into, I'll think of a whole thing, into the email and or text that they've chosen for themselves. So if they go to settings, they can put in multiple email addresses. And I would strongly recommend you make them put in one. This is important. If this is the second thing. The first thing you need to make sure you walk away with is knowing the difference between pages and assessments. The second thing you need to walk away with is if you are using the free version of Canvas and a student does not have an email when they go to settings and they forget their password, they have to create a brand new account. You've now lost, they've lost all their grades, all their assignments, all their everything. There's no way to change their password in a free account if they did not put an email in here. So I always do it the very first day of class is I have them go to settings and put in their email, right? They can put in multiple emails. And if they do, when you do announcements, they'll get the announcement at all their emails. They can also add a text message a cell number to get text messages if they want text messages, 
right? But they have to have one email. So make sure you write it down and make sure the students put in an actual real email address that they can get to because when they then they'll can click the forget password link and it'll send them a link to their email. If their email is not in there, even this is important, this is so weird. Even if they log into Canvas with a valid email, if there's no email here, it's not going to let them reset their password. Okay, so it, it's critical that that's in there. Let me just show you this. I know sometimes I'm, I'm going through a lot. So what I find is if it's gotten to a point where you're like, I can't take anything else in this woman talks too much, then just kind of zone out. It's cool, right? Notifications, there is tons of notifications, right? And so you can say to students, if I put a text message, there'd be my text message here. If I put in a second email, I'd have my second email address here. And I could choose what gets sent to what account. So I could say, if you change a due date, I want a notification. If you change the grading policy, I want a notification. If you add a file, I, want, I don't want to know, right? So students, every student can go through here and you can say to them, you really should have your due date on, right? And so you could tell them, you know, I want you to have your announcements on because otherwise you, you won't know what I'm, what I'm um, sending you. So make sure your announcements are on. Okay. Okay. A couple of questions, Renee. Okay. If this, is this a good time? Absolutely. Okay. So Always a um, good <laughs> in a lot of the ESL systems, they have made them already sorted into the different assignments, quizzes, etc. Right. So wouldn't it be difficult to put this all in the home page? Um, so maybe I, Christina, would you like to turn your mic on? Yes, there she is. Great. So so for you, you have a module called quizzes and then a module called pages and then is that how you have it set up in ESL? Yes, and we have we have all all of them except uh, maybe three or four that I've taken off. Okay, at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's a great idea and for the lower level to all have it in the home page. But how would you put all that in the home page? Yeah, so if you already have so for you, um, it's easier for you to put it in a module, right? So which okay. is not quite as convenient as home but all you would do is you would create a module right? right and and you could choose whether you want to do it by week um i find for esl when i worked with them week works best because then they could just look at the date on it so they could you could say it's week three march um fourth through tenth or something right and then right. what you would do is you would go to your module and click this plus and yes it's going to take a little while and then you'd have to find everything that needs to be in that week. So let's say I want this assignment. Let me see. I want to see what, I'm, what am I working in here? Oh, good. I'm working in the one I made. I just don't want to mess up somebody's class. Um, and then I want to go back here and I want to go. I want that in this module. And I want, uh, do I have any tests? Uh, no. Yeah, test one. I want test one in this module. Okay, and then you would make another module and you would add all the pieces to that module. So if you're doing this by week, what I would do is unpublish everything that you have already, right? So just don't, don't get rid of any of your quizzes or anything, just unpublish them so the students can't see them. Okay. Create, create a brand new module for a given week, or right. you can do it by subject. Right. Add, add what they need just for that week and then publish just that week, right? And then next week you would create a new module add the pieces for that week and publish just that week. And then if they don't need this week anymore to make it easier on them, unpublish this week and then they won't even be able to see that week. And the only thing they'll see is the one module for that given week that they need to access. Got it, excellent. Okay. And feel free to email if you have trouble with that. Okay. Okay. okay, so next question, we have two more. Okay. Uh, is it possible to upload student list from our ASAP list. Gosh, okay. You talk ASAP, right? So we were the guinea pigs from ASAP. And um, are you using the free or the paid? Whoever asked that question. This is RC? No, that would be paid. 
Okay, perfect. So um, ASAP now has a Canvas integration. It's not 1000% perfect, but it's very close. And so um, I could, I can, I can actually show you, um, I go to ASAP. I'm gonna go to ASAP4 and let me pull up um, one of my, so for example, we have orientation. Our students will need to um, go on to ASAP, sign up for the free orientation course. And when they do that, it will automatically put them in to Canvas and into that course. So you see here, it has this new thing called Canvas ID. And it automatically, when I put them in there, because I linked this course to a specific Canvas course, specifically the dental orientation course, whenever I add a person here, it automatically adds them to that course. If they are not already a student, a user of Canvas, it also creates a brand new account for them. So they would just go and log in and they get an email and it'll say, click here to pick a password. And they just make a password and they're right in Canvas. Um, Excellent. And there shouldn't be any extra cost. You just need to reach out to them and tell them you want to turn on the Canvas integration. Um, and they'll walk you through. They'll have to do something on, on their end. And I got to tell you, they have been super receptive because there's been some issues. Like, for example, I'll show you this one. Let me see, unless they fixed it. Did they fix it? Oh, my gosh, they fixed it. Yay. So I had this one student for whatever reason was not showing okay. It was showing not enrolled. And there's a little fix button over here usually, but it wasn't showing up. And so, and they, their response has literally been within 24 hours, almost every issue we've had, they fixed. So um, as of yesterday, this person was, was had having an error and now they're okay. So I can reach out to them and let them know. Um, so if you're using ASAP, absolutely reach out to them. Like I said, there's no additional cost. Um, you just need to tell them that you want to turn on the, the Canvas um, integration. Just so you know, they chose not to work directly with Canvas. So if you talk to Canvas and you ask them about ASAP integration, they will tell you there's no such thing. Um, and it's because Canvas charges companies to do integration and ASAP chose to do it without working with them. So just so you so know, does this mean, so does this mean if I'm, if I'm, um, um, because we have a lot of turnover in our, you know, a lot of turnover, a lot of starts, a lot of stops. Right. Uh -huh. If we keep our ASAP list current, will that? Ab absolutely. That will, that that's will populate. Exactly, that's and that exactly will update why in, we did it. Okay. Yeah. That's, Excellent. we did it for high school. Keep in mind though, that when you drop from ASAP, it drops them from Canvas and you lose their grades. So make sure that you tell okay. the teachers to export their grades before you do the drop in ASAP. That's the only caveat that we found so far. Other than that, it works really well. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks. Yeah, sure. Okay, so Lars, I apologize if that wasn't RC that asked that question. That was you. Forgive me. <laughs> okay, RC, no how? <laughs> I recognized your voice. How can I change the assignment from a quiz? All my assignments in Canvas are titled quizzes. Assignments in Canvas are titled quizzes. Well, so you can rename anything. So I have an assignment here. Unfortunately, you have to do it one by one. Click on these little dots and click edit. And then just like if I wanted to call this a quiz, I can go here and call this a quiz and rename it. I don't know if that's answering your question or not. Yeah, no, RC. It's, it's, no, it's doing fine. My my issue is is that for my course at Sequoia, the we have a person that puts in all of our work. So Canvas is already set up for me. So okay. I went to another class. I think Lars was there when we were trying to figure out how to create assignments on Canvas, okay. and she was way above even answering any of those questions, because I guess everyone had to have a type of uh, understanding of Canvas. So I'm okay. even trying to just put my own extra little assignments because some units have 10 homework assignments right. and then okay. some other units have three or four assignments. And then, okay. so I wanted to add my own assignments, but I just wanted to know because the person that did our Canvas already put everything, but every time that students go to an assignment, 
it says quiz. And so they're freaking out. It's like, oh, Ms. Arce, is it a quiz? I was like, no, it's just how she named it. So I just wanted to know if I could go in and change it because- Yeah, just it. click on, yes. Yeah, so if, if you wanna make a new one, obviously you click the plus sign, pick assignment, quiz, page. You know, most people do, don't do the quizzes here, but you can make a new quiz from here if you really want to. But most people do assignment or page and then just name it what you want. But if it's already there, like this is one of the assignments and it's called a quiz and you're like, no, that's not a quiz. I just let me go back and call it homework. And fortunately, there's no way that I know of to do um, a mass change. So let's say, for example, I want all these pages to be changed to um, pages with an S. I'd have to manually do everyone separately. There's no way that I know in Canvas to, to go and change a bunch yes. of things at once. Yeah. Um, okay, so um, two more questions have come through. The, right. the student turnover rate in my high school class is pretty high. How easy is it to manage Canvas in such situations? Yeah, so if you're not if you're not doing paid with ASAP, which is why specifically was one of the reasons we went paid, it is, it's not difficult, but um, so basically in, um, uh, no, I'm in the wrong one. Let me go to the free one. Um, is, are you using free or paid? Uh, this is person. Archana. We are using uh, the paid one. Okay. So yeah. it, it um, I'm assuming you're using paid and you don't have an integration to your LMS. So if you are to your um, SIS, your student information system, because that's obviously the easy way because at most schools, your student information system is sort of your God account, right? It's your account that is that you always keep updated. So that's why those of you that use ASAP, you now have the advantage. If not, there's two places in um the paid version. So I'm in the paid version now. And if I go to, this is my whole account, everything in my account, um, Mount Diablo Adult at the top level, I've got people, right? So it, it, you sort of have to think of a strategy. So you might, I don't know what your school strategy is. So our strategy is that once we have a user in here, we're not deleting them. From, we're going to just leave them in Canvas because the way Canvas charges is if a user has not logged in within, I think it's nine months, they're not charging you for that user. So we're just leaving everybody in here. If you don't want them in here, you can go in here and, and you, can, you can delete them, right? Oh, sorry, wrong one. You can delete them. But, but for the most part, sorry, I'm going to click and I can click delete from Mount Diablo Adult Education. But um, like I said, we've chosen as a policy to leave everybody in here. So for your question, you'll be working at the class level, right? Unless you choose to delete them from here. So you'll need to go to your course and you'll see a list of all the courses in your school. And then you'll need to go to people and you'll need to click on these dots and you'll need to go to remove from course. Now you don't wanna deactivate because if they're in another course and you deactivate them, they can't even get into that course. So generally by, um, you know, again, talk to your, whoever your Canvas admin is, but generally you're gonna remove from the course. Again, remember you lose their grades. So make sure that you've gone to your grade book and you've just gone to, and I, I you can do an export on, for individual, or you can just click here and export everybody and just have them. I don't know. I know for us, our grades get moved into ASAP. So um, the, hopefully the teacher put them in ASAP before they removed them from the course. But you would have to manually go to every course, go to people and add people if you have somebody that's going into the course or remove from the course anybody that's no longer in the course. Right. So it's, it's, it's kind of a manual thing. Um, I think what I would probably do if you don't have an overall person that's doing this is there's a couple of sort of workflows you can think about. Whoever your database, your student information system person is, you might have them when they're deleting, you know, when they're making a change in the student information system, let the teacher know, and then the teacher can go in and remove them from their course. That could be one workflow. Um, if you have a really nice underworked student information system person, they can maybe go in and remove them from Canvas. Um, 
Yeah, so unfortunately it's, it's manual if you're not linking it to your student information system. Yeah. Okay, so the next question, are assignments just pages with a grade from Francis? Um, yes, except remember when I went through them, they are, they are essentially, essentially pages with a grade and these other pieces. So they're pages with a grade that also allows you to upload something. And for those of you that here, let me go ahead and up, let me show you, um, I could show you what the upload looks like. Um, so those of you that haven't done this before, the advantage of using an upload is something called SpeedGrader. You will love it. Their grade book is not great. SpeedGrader is amazing. So I'm going to go to an assignment here. This is my orientation. So to answer your question, an assignment allows update, uploads, and grades. That's the difference, right? And it's going to show up. So I am going to go to my high school diploma assignment. So in, I created this as an assignment, right? And because it has an upload, it has a speed grader option. Okay, so I'm going to click on speed grader. And it is actually going to pull up anything that anybody uploaded. So you don't have to download this JPEG to see it. It's going to show up right here. If you had multiple JPEGs, I would just scroll through and it would show me every single picture that's there, or they can upload a PDF or a Word document, um, a Google Doc, anything. And it shows up here. You can now give it a grade, which, wow, this is a new person. I hadn't graded it yet. Give it a grade and you can even add a comment like thank you or um, great work or whatever you want. And then just click submit and that thing's graded so fast. And then I just click here and go to the next person. This person hasn't submitted anything yet, so I'm not going to grade it. And I could just go through. This person did. And I could tell I already graded this person. And so super fast. Um, grading. And you can even add a comment here without a grade. So if they're late, you can say, uh, really, Renee, late again um, to, to the comment and they'll see it in their grades. So speed grader is really nice. So having them upload, and remember I showed you, they can do it with Google too. Super fast way to, to grade assignments using speed grader. Okay. Um, okay. Do you want to take a sip of water before you answer the next question? Is it a long question? <laughs> no, you've just been you've just been talking nonstop. I was trying to be a good host and make sure I take care of my presenter. There we go. Okay. Um, the next question is: I have a question about studio, and Susan, uh, you may I don't know have to turn your mic on. When I transfer uh, video from studio, it always comes named as studio instead of the name of the video in studio. Okay, I don't know studio. Tell me more about studio. Okay, that's Ooh. what I was wondering. Susan, are you available yes. to talk? There she yes, is. I'm here. Okay. So um, in studio, if I want videos to go into my canvas, then I have um, taken them from YouTube and on the bottom, or not on the, not, uh, what is it called? The navigation system over on the far left okay in our um at martinez one of the things on the bottom like by where the help is is mm -hmm. studio where we can upload ah. our videos or we could even make and record our own videos and then take those videos and put them into our modules Wow. Okay. So that is, I have not used studio. So I, love I it. so I will, thank you. So what <laughs> we use for those of you that, I mean, studio look, and I don't know if it's a, if it's an, a paid add on or not, I'll have to look that up. Thank you. I'm going to make myself a note. So I can ask. So your question is why is it coming in with the word studio instead of the actual name of the video? Is that your question? Right. It, and ex you know what? I, I'm trying to think right now if it comes in as studio or what, but I have my my videos in my studio all named, you know, whatever they are. Right. Uh -huh. But whenever I select my video and then I add it to my module, instead of carrying over the name of that video, mm -hmm. I always have to go in and rename it because it comes over as and it may be something like right. import or right. I got what you're like saying. That. So do me a favor. You have my email in mm -hmm. um, 
on you know the website and stuff send me an email with that question and i will figure it out and get back with you give me a couple days because i have i literally have not used studio i just wanted to share and studio might be the perfect solution again i don't know if it's a paid add-on or not but um, I just want to show you what we use. It has nothing to do with Canvas, but it's a great option if you're looking for a video server that doesn't have all the YouTube ads. So we put all our videos on Vimeo.com. There's a paid option and a free option. And it's just this, the amount of videos that you're uploading, if, whether you go over that, you'll have to go to um, paid. Um, but it's reasonable. It's like, I don't know, $100 a year or something. It's pretty pretty reasonable for tons of videos. And so we have these things called showcases, which are basically just folders of videos. Um, so we have all our new world of work stuff. We have our our textbook videos. Um, I downloaded stuff from the, um, the Cape Summit. Um, the tutorials on Canvas are here that I linked on the website. Um, but it's nice because then you could, this, how the students see them is they see the video, they can either see all of them. Like if they go here, they can see the whole, the whole set. So if I go share, copy, it looks like this. This is what the showcase looks like. So mm. they'll see all the videos. Um, but then I could also share just an individual video. Uh, let me see, sorry. And if I want to share the video, then they can, this is the, so what the teachers do is they tend to put the individual video links in their assignment in Canvas. So the students would just go to their, the Canvas page with the assignment and say, I want you to watch this video on how to add um, Canvas to your phone. Right. That's so random because they're not going to do that, but right. But then the student sees this and they have different settings that they can also download this video if they, for some reason, if they want to, it also resizes to whatever device they're using. So if they're watching it on a phone, it's gonna be lower res than if they're watching it on their 36 inch monitor. And it just does that automatically. You just upload your video and it totally changes the sizes for you. And so the, like I said, the teachers just grab the late this and link them in their, um, in their assignments. So Vimeo is just another option if you're looking for a place to put your um, videos. But I will definitely look studio and add that to my next presentation, um, yeah. especially studio. if it doesn't, especially if it doesn't cost anymore. That would be amazing. Well, it's part of the Canvas. I mean, and I, I looked. We do have a paid version, I guess. Yeah. So I just pulled it up. You know, I, I searched for Studio Canvas and it says that. And so I right. just have to look and see. I'm guessing it's one of two things. Either it's a paid extra or if it's not a paid extra, it's something I have to do an admin to go in and turn it on, which I just didn't know about. So I didn't do it. Yeah. So, so turn it um, on because cool. um, you can. Yeah. Make, I like it better than Screencastify. It's easier, friendlier. Really? Oh, my gosh. That's great. I will teacher definitely. teacher making how to videos or whatever. Oh, thank you. Okay. I love doing these because I always learn. That is amazing. <laughs> thank you. I will definitely look it up and, um, and it, especially if it's free, I'm going to turn it on because, and then I'll just send a note out to all my teachers going, you'll see this new button, use it if you want. Don't use it if you don't want. If you want training, I'll figure it out. But since I just pulled up that, that thing for phone is, that was going to be on my slideshow, is I would strongly recommend you recommend to your students that they add Canvas to their phone because as we know, students are on their phone much more often than they are on their computer, especially logged into Canvas. And if they download it on their phone, it's free, right? And turn on the whatever notifications they turn on in Canvas. So they're in Canvas and they went here and they turned on their notifications. Whatever notifications are on here, will we'll go into the app. So for example, anytime you change a due date or add a due date, they'll get a little beep thing on their, the, the app on their phone and they'll know, and they'll be able to click on it. If you send out an announcement from Canvas, they'll get a little beep on their app and they'll be able to see the announcement right on their phone. And you can, you can use the app if it's free. So here's a trick for free. Took me forever to figure this out. You guys probably figured it out, but I didn't. So when you go into the app, it will say, what is the name of your school? If you're using a paid version, type in your school name and you'll find your school. If you're using a free version, you need to type in canvas.instructure.com. This right here up here, right? That will then bring you to the Canvas login screen. 
And then the students could log in with the email and the password they used in their free Canvas account to get the same exact experience you would with the paid one. Okay. So once again, don't search for your school if you're using the free account. Just type in where it says, what is the school name? Type in canvas.instructure.com and you'll be able to log in and you can use it. Because for a long time, we didn't know we can use it with the free version. So I, it was nice that um, I, I don't even remember how I figured that. I think it was random. <laughs> I think I was just fooling around one time and I, and I found it. Um, let me go back to, um, oh, wait. You ready for more questions? Yeah, but let me go back to the one I made and I want it to go to, I think this is the one that I imported everything. I think, I don't remember now. Oh my God. Um, I think I called it, didn't I call it change or grade or something? Question about <laughs> grades, you called it. Yeah, check for grades, yay. Okay, let me see. Okay, and <laughs> so let me get a grade. Oh, that, that was a really bad one to do because it has all the assignments, but it doesn't, it did not um, bring over any people, I don't think. So let me check. So, oops, sorry. Let me go over to people. Yeah, so in my import, so this is important. I didn't know this, so I learned this today too. I just did an import and I said all content in my previous course and I had about 30 people in this course. So when this, when this imported, it did bring in all the assignments. So if you notice my grade book, it still has all the assignments in there, but it's not gonna have any grades because there's no people that came over with the import. So, you know, of course you're gonna have your assignments because you said you wanted everything moved over, or I said, I wanted everything moved over, including my assignment. So those will show up, but it's nice. There's no grades and there's no people. So that that's a good way to be able to um, just move over your content by doing an export and then importing it. Renee, okay. yes. can you add one of those people from that previous course? And if you do, will it add their grades? No, okay. good question. grades are specific to a given course and there isn't even a way to like export and then import grades into another course that I know of. Maybe there's a way, but I, I haven't, uh, which kind of makes sense that you want grades specific to a course. Yeah. Okay. okay I'm ready. Okay. Do you use yeah, Canvas? Me. I'm sorry. Did somebody want to say something? Okay. Do you use Canvas during synchronous lessons, uh, for example, to display and teach on Zoom, or do you only use it asynchronously, as asked by Judith? Okay, Judith, that's a really good question. I think it depends on the teacher. Um, God, my voice sounds really strange right now. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes, you sound okay. fine. Okay, it's just me. Maybe my ears are clogged. Um, so I know my dental teachers, if any of you came to my presentation this morning, um, definitely uses Canvas. Often it's to review like what is due, what is coming up, right? So they might show, you know, don't forget, here's the homework assignment. Um, also, the biggest thing that is used in Canvas um, synchronously are the discussions, so if you're having a discussion, a great way to use a discussion is to write a, you know, you kind of want a critical thinking question, and then you assign it for homework for their asynchronous time. And you say, okay, tonight I want you to answer this question. And you might have details like write at least three sentences. And the nice part about discussions, if you haven't used it, is one of the options, which in my opinion should be defaulted, but it's not, you have to check it is users must post before seeing replies. So they have to make their posts before they can see what all the other students said. And then the next day during synchronous time, you can pull up all their replies and start having a discussion about what different people said in response to your critical thinking question, right? And it doesn't have to be deep. You can be doing vocabulary. You can be doing, you know, like I said, it could be quick, but it's great because you'll see all their responses and you can start having a discussion. It could be an introduction to a unit. It could be 
um, dental. What do you think coronal polish is all about? I don't know. I'm making this up. I don't know the dental curriculum. And then the next day, you're going to start your coronal polish unit. So you pull up the discussion. And you're like, somebody said coronal polish is a basketball term. Nope, not right. Some you right. So, but it starts you talking. So I would say discussion is used a lot during synchronous time because you're pulling up what they said um, and sharing it and going deeper and and having. Um, having it start the discussion. And then you might pull up your modules and your specific assignments saying, don't forget this, by, by the time we meet on Thursday, I need to make sure that you've gone through these three assignments and this one needs to be uploaded. Let's assume that's an assignment, not a page. Um, and then you can also click on home and say, don't forget tomorrow. This is a really bad example. I'm sorry, guys. Um, because that was my, um, and you can pull up your homepage and say, don't forget, tomorrow is our office hours time. So, you know, make sure that if you have any questions, you're popping in for our office hour tomorrow, right? And you've got the homepage in front of you to remind them that's where the office hour links are. Um, this one's a little long, and I know my dental teachers are here, and they're like, of course it's long. You told me to put all this stuff on it. Yes, I did. So now, now that I'm getting better and try to think of things. I try to make the homepage so you don't have to scroll. Everything is, you know, on one page. And then if you need to add additional assignment, you can do it as a page in a module or create some fancy lounge somewhere. Um, I love the lounge idea, I have to say. Is, isn't it cute? And you That's can just, a wonderful and you can, idea. even if it only has one link, you could start with one link. And then if you think of other things, you can expand it. And you can even have conversations with the students, like what would be helpful to have in the lounge, right? Good idea. I like, let the students create the lounge. Hey, okay, um, even better. I know, yeah. So Christina asked, um, is that a setting? And well, let me read the whole thing. Is that a setting from admin level because my teachers cannot remove students? Mm, yes. Oh, good question. Yes, it is a setting. If you're in the paid version, your administrator could decide if you can add students, if you can delete students, if you can move students to another class. So yes, sorry about that. I forgot to mention that that can be turned off at the admin level. So you then need to talk to your admin, whoever is making those decisions and say, what is our workflow? What, especially if, if, as somebody said, um, if you have a lot of movement in and out, like I know our high school does, um, our CTEC doesn't as much, but high school definitely, what is the workflow to ensure the student is out of the course when they need to be, and even more importantly, in a course that they just started so they're not missing any learning time? How does that happen? Yeah. Very good. Okay, so Lisa asked, how do you create the assignments but restrict students from moving from number one to number two, they want, she wants the student to complete assignment one before they complete assignment two. Um, the only Lisa, way I- Yeah, I, I was just gonna say, Lisa, did I get that right? Sorry, Renee, sorry. No, go ahead, Lisa, if you wanna yes. clarify. Yeah. That is correct. Okay. okay, so I think the only way I could think about it would be, um, so you can, you can create assignment one, this is the assignment, decide, you know, points, what all, all that stuff. And then down here, you would say it's available from today through Sunday, right? And then I would save that, what am I in? Yeah, I don't, I don't wanna save it, I'm in the dental course. And then you'd create assignment two, and then you'd make that available. So this goes through March 7th, you'd make this available on March 8th through maybe the 10th. So they couldn't see this until March 8th. That's one way is to put these dates in. The other way is to just not publish it. So let's say this is assignment one and this is assignment two. So you're now gonna unpublish assignment two. Uh, yes, yeah, as soon as it decides to, why are we not? Well, you would unpublish it if it's not being ridiculous and stupid. Um, I don't know, why is it not fine? do it that way. No, I don't know. It's being okay. Ew. Now it's just all going to be okay. So let's say that's, <laughs> a, that's assignment one. I don't know. It was being bizarre. Um, and 
you only want assignment one. So you're going to tell the students your assignment for tonight is coronal polish evaluation of a typodont. Um, and if you're in dental, you know what that is. Otherwise, we're all going typodont. I know is like the teeth that I know that costs five hundred dollars. I know that too. Um, so and then tomorrow night you can set, you can check and you can make sure everybody did it and then you could turn on assignment two. So if this is not green, they can't see the assignment. So then you wouldn't have to put any dates on the assignment. You just wouldn't publish it. So the two ways to do it is put the the this dates when you do it or just publish it unpublish as they do it. Or give them some responsibility and tell them they better not do number two until they do number one. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. I was going to say, yeah, uh, yeah, no. Okay. Um, that, that, that was the third option, but I knew you were going to overrule me there. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay. What's the next question? Okay. So, um, Nushin, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Nushin, and I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm not sure you made the comment about annotating with notes directly on the uploaded assignments yes it was just a comment when students upload an assignment i you can write notes and you can also annotate with the pen in, in color in you, speed in speed grader yes yes yeah thank oh, okay. you good let, let me go uh speed grader i don't know if this if the one i just pulled up was an assignment but um it's not so this is a quiz sorry but yeah there's tools here thank you i forgot all about that because i actually haven't i do more teacher training and i'm not i i don't make my teachers do a lot of assignments i'm i'm yeah i want to be mean but they're super busy so um but there there is pens here you're right and you can write on them um as well as do the grade and add a comment yeah thank you that that's really good okay and then um Archana mentioned that they use Aztecs, Newslia, News, 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 Newzella. Newzella, thank you. Yeah. Uh, for ABE and HSC, how can we use a redirecting tool on Canvas? Mm. Okay. So um, are you paid or free? Uh, we are paid. Paid. Okay. So I would probably do it at the, let's see, am I in the paid one here? Yes. So I would probably do it at the admin level if your admin will do it. Um, and then in your um, settings at the admin level, um, you've got apps. So this is, it looks the same as the course level, but if you do it at the admin level, it'll, it'll just show up on every on every course. And then you could, if you've got, so like New Zella is here. I know for a fact though, they will only, they will only integrate New Zella if your district is using New Zella. They will not, they, because our adult school uses New Zella, but our K-12 doesn't. And New Zella refuses to send us the integration information because our entire district doesn't do it. So I know for New Zella, we, we haven't been able to integrate it. Um, and the reason you want to integrate is um, one is for login. And some of these apps, if you integrate, you can, you can have, you can log into Canvas and have it also log into the app. But the second thing is if there's graded assignments, like in New Zella, you can grade things, you can set it up so it automatically goes into the grade book. So that's the main, the two main reasons you want to integrate login and that graded assignments go into the gradebook automatically. Um, if you go to apps and the app is not there that you want, um, you've got to go to, uh, I think it's view app configurations. Uh, um, oh, hey, hey. I, you know when you do something and you haven't done it for a while, you couldn't remember? I just went to app configurations and there's Google LTI. So all you have to do literally in the paid version is go here go to app configurations and turn this little button on and then Google will be show up in everybody's class. I knew it was super easy. I just couldn't remember where it was. Um, and this is where you can turn on Canvas Commons too, which is a bunch of curriculum if you haven't looked at Canvas Commons, but it's literally a button. But this button is not in the free version. So there's gotta be a different way to bring in um, Google Assignments LTI to the free version. Um, like I said, I read it. But you were asking for integration, so apps, um, uh, uh, gosh, I don't, 
Oh, here it is. You click. Okay. So I went to, sorry. So first check here if, if the app is here. And then if it is, reach out. Let's see you use a claim. Reach out to a claim and say, I want to add this to Canvas. Can you send me the, um, the consumer key and the shared secret? And 75% of apps will just send you this. It doesn't cost anything. It's free. You copy and paste it here, and it's now integrated. Okay. If your app is not there, then you want to go to, uh, I think it was, did I go to manage app list? No, I did not. I'm so sorry. View app configurations. View app configurations. Add an app. And then you'll need to manual entry everything. And I know, um, like, we just used one for search tech and they said, you just need to call us and we'll, we'll log into your portal and we'll add all the stuff for you. So they just literally went in and I don't remember which one they did. I think it was this one and they just put in all the stuff and it just worked. So basically you just need to get a hold of the company. I think it was, yeah, that's it. Cenegage Learning Mind Links. So they actually, we just did a tech call with them. They remote accessed in. They set it all up, and then now my search tech, when they could take the test in mind links, it shows up in their gradebook. So um, again, it just depends on the app, but start with searching for the app, because if it's searched, they already have all the settings. You just need the consumer key and the shared secret. If it's not here, then you go to view configurations, add app, and then you have to call the company or email the company for all this information. Sorry, I couldn't. I wish I could say, hey, if you have Newzella, this is the fields. But unfortunately, every single integration has the, the specific info has to be given to you from the company. Seems like it would be easier, but I don't know. Um, other questions? Absolutely. I'm, okay. I'm afraid to scroll down too far because we've got 15 and 15 minutes. So, okay. <laughs> um, this is from Chris. So can you export students from one domain, i.e. domain one.instructure.com and import into another domain, i.e. domain two.instructure.com? The reason is their adult school may have a different domain than the high school domain and they're um, thinking about summer school. So Chris, if you want to add anything to that, but it sounds like you want to take your high school students and put them into the adult ed domain. Is that right? Easily. Right. Okay. Uh, um, yeah, and I don't know the I don't know the answer. So I, so I recommend you email me. Um, you have my email on the website, and I'm glad to find out. I just made myself a note. Import. Um, so basically, you would. I'm assuming you would have to go through all the people in the people list and um, choose because, or do you somehow have your high school already separated from your adult school in your current Canvas so, somehow? Yeah, so the, the high school already has Canvas set up. Okay. Um, the adult school, we were actually on a, on, we're using ASAP and okay. Google Classroom. And we wanna migrate and, and go into Canvas. And so I'm looking at, looking at possibly setting up a canvas here, one of the things that the uh, uh, admin told me was that we may have to get our own separate uh, uh, domain here for the adult school mm -hmm. to, to keep separate from, from the K-12. So you don't, your, your users are not in the canvas, in your canvas thing yet for K-12, right? They're not in, in there yet. In K-12, they are. Oh, they are in the K-12. Yes. Um, and they already have courses and they're taking courses. So you need to move them and grades or just people? Uh, just just the people. Just, okay. Just, just the students when they come, because they'll take their summer school over here at our... At our uh, okay. So I would strongly recommend you call ASAP since you're already paying for ASAP uh -huh. and, and just have them turn on the ASAP integration because then you literally, and then you'd go to Canvas and you'd say, I'd like Canvas and I'd like it to be at, you know, Martin, I don't know what school you are, but Martinez uh, adult yeah. school dot whatever. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh -huh. um, and once that's set up, you would literally go to your ASAP and you would say, and you would create a course in your new domain of Canvas and you'd call it, I don't know, ASE science test prep. Right. Um, and then in your um, ASAP, you would have a course called ASE science test prep and any students you put in there would now automatically show up in here. So then the only students you have in your Canvas course are ones that are 
in courses or at some point were in a course, right? Because if you're not deleting them when they when they get out of courses, they'll just stay in there, but they won't be in a course. But then you don't have to worry about if you drop somebody in ASAP, it's going to drop it in Canvas. If you add somebody in ASAP, it's going to add it in Canvas. And you don't, it's just one less thing that you have to worry about. And your teachers don't have to go, God, Renee was added to my class three weeks ago and she's still not showing up in my Canvas course, right? right. You know that's going to happen, right? <laughs> so, um, so, yeah. So, I see two workflows. One is if you can get your ASAP integration turned on. And I got to say, it doesn't affect ASAP at all. So if your sys person is going, I don't have time for this, it, it really, once it's set up, there's nothing they have to do, right? It, it just works. Sure. Um, the other thing, if that, if that just isn't going to happen, they're just like, we don't want that to happen right now. Have your admin turn on in your portal the ability for teachers to add students themselves. Because if a student gets added to a class and they're just not showing up in Canvas, then allow your teacher to put them in because you don't want them to miss a week or two of not being able to do their work because there's some tech glitch. Right. Right. Um, but I would definitely start with ASAP. Like I said, there's no additional costs. They'll turn on the integration for you, walk you through how to do it, answer tech support questions. Um, and like I said, it just works. And so I would, um, if you, if your admin is going to allow you to do that, I would definitely go that route. Cool. Thank you. Sure. But okay. if you have more questions, email me. Okay. Uh, yes. Go ahead. Sorry. sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm very sorry. Um, so Christina was talking about the possibility that, um, of using prerequisites, which you can do at the module level, apparently that might've been, I think that that was in reference to, having student complete assignment one before they go to assignment two. Christina, are you still here? Would you like to chime in? Sure. Yes, so, she is. please tell me. Yeah, if you go into a module in any course. Okay, so uh, let me pick a different module. Does it matter if it's free or paid? I don't think so, but okay. I've never used free, so I don't know. <laughs> okay, no, that's cool. I'll go here. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Uh -huh. And um, All right, yeah. so you go to modules, and then in your first module, go ahead and click on the three dots to the right, the snowman, and choose edit. And then see how it says oh, um, add a requirement. lock until. If uh -huh. this was the second one, it would instead say prerequisite right? It would say, oh, you have to do module one before you can start module ah. two. But then as far as like the prerequisite or the, what was it? Not the prerequisite, but the requirement. requirement. If you click on there and look at the requirement. Uh -huh. You go in and add each one of the assignments in the module and say on the, so on the left, you pick the assignment mm -hmm. and on the right, you say what they have to do before they can move to the next one. So view it, mark okay. it as done. And what's kind of cool is oh, if you wow. choose that mark is done, then all of a sudden the mark is done option shows up and they can just click, oh, I've read this, you know. So an actionable part on their end mm -hmm. of a view only page is kind of cool. So you would go through and list all the ad requirements for any module. And then what's awesome is as the student starts working through it, these little green check marks show up. So it keeps track for the student of where they're at, which is a little ironic because it would make more sense to do that in the non-prerequisite method <laughs> because in the prerequisite Two, right? method they have to work in order it's pretty <laughs> obvious where they're at right. whereas a little bit less obvious in a module that's completely open that, oh that's so cool so those of you that so this is and notice you still have to put everything in your module that you want to work with because it's only it's only this module that you're doing the prerequisites with um, from what it looks like right so I could so they can't get to it until tomorrow because that's the date I put. And then if you have assignment one and assignment two, so I've got page one and page two, I say you have to do page one before you can do page two. That's cool. That person to ask. And then here's the link, the thing to say, students must move through requirements in sequential order. <gasps> that's brilliant. I did not know that one. That is so good. Thank you. So you now, could put 10 assignments in here and say that you have to do all 10 in a certain order. And then you wouldn't have to put dates on your assignment because they can't do the second one until they do the first one. That's great. Um, Christina, is that only at the, the module level or like if she were to click on the, um, if you close that 
and you go to your profile settings and go to edit on that no the page i'm sorry stay in that module this one go down to item number three where it says page your profile there you go and oh. go to edit and yeah that's just because that's just a single thing so you can't have a an so order it doesn't something. do it at that item right okay. because because it's a single thing right so that makes sense because each of these are one thing right so and and of course it's not going to let you put a text header in as one of the things so i'm sure if there was assignments i mean yeah assignments pages quizzes discussions anything that requires action you'd be able to add so let me go to this one so this one has an assignment in a page. So if I go to edit, add requirement. Oh, here's prerequisite. Right? Exactly. So then you'd have to do the previous module first. Right. So a prerequisite is an entire module. Right? Yes. It looks like. Okay. So you'd be able to say you have to do module one before you can do module two. It makes sense. And then you can add the prerequisites, which notice it's your assignments and your pages. So that's cool. Thank you. That is that is really cool. And it seems pretty easy. So I know this is a lot of stuff. So just remember, it's at the module level that you're editing. And I was so just going to say module. one small thing is when you then go to student view, it messes it up because now every time you go in as a student, you have to do everything in order to see anything. So if you're going to go that route in a course, I recommend that you add yourself as a student in the course if your admin allows you to do that or mm, just ask right. them to give you one that's your personal email you know and name it something other than yourself so students don't get confused and email mm. the wrong account and then have that student go through and open everything up so mm -hmm. then you can go into that student view and see what you need to see uh, so here just so you know that's what it looks like it says you know because i just said they had to complete all items in order so right now the only thing they can get to is the first one and um i'm sorry who was just talking? Was it Christine? Christina, yes. Christina, yep. sorry. So what Christina was talking about was, um, so student view lets you see as a student. And if and so, but you won't be able to get to any of these because you just, I just turned on, you have to do the first one before you can do the others. So what she was saying was go and in people, add um, yourself, like with your Gmail account, your personal account. And let me give you a hint. So if I'm going to add my personal account and I'm going to make myself a student, I don't think I'm in there, right? Um, oh, I am. Um, well, if I didn't already name myself, I would put my name and I know I could change it once it's in, put your name that starts with a Z like put ZZ. And the reason I say that is if you put yourself in as a student, you're going to show up in your grade book, right? And if you throw it at the very bottom, you're not having to remember to skip when you're putting in your grades. So throw, so if you want to put yourself in as a student, name yourself ZZ, first name, last name or something. Um, and then if you alphabetize by, you know, or if you alphabetize by last name, then make your last name start with ZZ. So you're showing up last in grades and you're not having to, you, you just know like test students at the bottom. So I just know my test students never gonna have a grade. Right. Okay, is there a, a way to send a reminder to students to complete an assignment? Um, so there's two things you can do. One is you can um, just do an announcement and hopefully you've told all your students to turn on notifications. And you're just going into your announcements. And by default, you're going to be sending to everybody at an announcement, and they will get a notification that you sent an announcement. Um, my dental teachers also do a daily wrap up as an announcement. So if you were in that class and they write, you know, this is what we learned today, don't forget this is your homework tonight before tomorrow's Zoom, make sure you do this. And they do that every day as a wrap up, and that's an announcement that the students get notified are there. So basically you wanna use announcements to notify students. 